Hello everybody, it is Thursday, December 24th, Christmas Eve, at about 12 noon lunchtime. And I'm just outside Liverpool Street Station in central London. So, going to give you a, a little tour of uh, the area on Christmas Eve. And I love this uh, detail here. This is a traditional shoe and key repair place. But just look at that uh, painting there. That's something special in my book. So um, that's what you've got. Quality shoe repairs, precision and key cutting. Pretty good. Okay, off we go. And no surprise, everything is closed. And you've got here Jones the Butcher and some pretty interesting details there. Brains, hearts. You've got your, your pheasant and partridge, some hares. Not one for the vegetarians, methinks. So in this unit, there's just one shop open. And give you a flavor of what's going on. This store is now closed, which is pretty much replicated right across London. And we find ourselves on Liverpool Street. Let's have a look. Let's go down here. Alderman's Walk and there's a message there from myself myself to all my my viewers and uh, many fans right around the world uh, I should say now a Merry Christmas to you and a Happy New Year all the best to all of you for 2021 and showing you the uh, past and the present all together there um, I mean look at those those magnificent skyscrapers Let's see if we can get any more detail on those yeah, I should really know what each of the buildings is called. Um, fortunately I only know the former NatWest Tower now called Tower 42. I think this one, I, I never can get clear if that's the pinnacle or if that's called Heron Tower but um, look in the centre there you can see that lift going down the lift shaft there. It's a decent uh, view. Yeah. 
Okay, shall we begin our walk? Uh, so as I said, it's a much cooler day today. It's about um, 7C, which is 45 Fahrenheit. So I like it. It's, uh, it's dry, it's sunny. <sighs> Breathing in that, uh, that good energy there. Um, beautiful day as far as I'm concerned. And obviously most people back home now so it's quiet and uh, and the city is is empty so this is a good time to do a bit of filming I, I feel Let's, uh, show you here. So there you can see a bit more of the detail on, on that. It's quite special. And looking up there. And here we've got St. Botolph's Church Hall. And show you her and this gentleman here and it's got a date then 1821 Lambeth which is a, a borough just south of the river and here we have something here it is in the vault beneath are deposited the remains of Sir William Rawlins and it looks like a date of 18 something, 30 maybe, yeah. difficult to say. Yes, 1836 and it looks like his, his wife is uh, underneath there. So um, it sums up this whole part of London really the um, financial district is a, a mix of the traditional uh, classic London history and then these modern skyscrapers and that's an unusual detail there and so is that and you've got the skull and crossbones so don't ask me what it all represents. Uh, I'd have to dig out my books to to find to find out. Um, just showing you, it's a nice touch there. You can see sushi, sushi samba restaurant through. Them. Not open, of course. And show you the smoke coming out of the top there. And there's that, not really huge fan of that. Um, this is impressive church here. Do I want to go over there? Um, no, I think we'll, we'll move on. I mean, there's, there's so much in this area, as I was saying yesterday, that uh, can't really stop at every, every single aspect. But uh, I do like these sort of pocket parks, uh, these little city gardens everywhere. Um, and in fact, there's a, a little map there showing you the various uh, ones that are here. Uh, yeah, that church is St. Boltov without Bishop's Gate. And this is um, a 
an interesting bit of street architecture. I'm not quite sure was that a former toilet or what I don't know what what that was. But it's uh, got a pretty impressive top on it. Oh, okay, it's, uh, it's called the Victorian Bathhouse Bishopsgate. Um, and it's currently a bar, but obviously it looks like it was something um, back in the 19th century. Well, quite possibly a, a genuine bathhouse. says since 1870 so some heritage there and we've got something here a bit of uh, advertisement there for Holland and Barrett right let's check out uh, this is New Broad Street and this is just quite an attractive street I mean look at the um there's the buildings here to show you those two sphinxes just on the top there yeah what you'll notice um within well within the, the sort of city of London, the financial area and right across other spheres is the, the um, often evidence of sort of Egyptian symbolism, um, Egyptian mythology, pyramids, sphinxes, etc. Just cropping up in number of different situations um quite what it all means i i don't know but uh certainly in relation to the sort of financial economic history of london there's a lot of um egyptian themed images showing you, just looking back there at Old Broad Street. And right, let's have a look. should show you there's just something over here it's um, referencing the, the the new so-called Elizabeth line the crossrail project um, which is hope yeah hopefully will get started in the next um, year or where well, it's already been sort of already begun but it hasn't really developed much. I think uh, there's a number of factors that sort of held up progress but uh, just showing you that's the Liverpool Street, the Elizabeth Line and it's uh, got um, purple theme of course uh, purple being the, the colour royal and yeah, it should be quite a smart um, piece of transport when it's all finished. Just 
got to switch hands. The um, the air is pretty cold, and I haven't got my gloves on, so I'll just switch over. I need to keep um, bare-handed just so I can zoom you up with any interesting details. Now this is one of my favourite places, this is Finsbury Circus, which is a, a square about five minutes away from Liverpool Street Station, but it's, it's the architecture is just absolutely magnificent. So I'm going to go into the Finsbury Circus Gardens and then show you just how great it is. And as you can see from the map, again, it's part of the city gardens set up, but it's uh, pretty nice. You've got this large green area, which does hold events in the summer. I've seen marquees um, and jazz bands, etc. So that's pretty nice. but quiet today, not a single bench is occupied. some great examples of the London plane tree here and then when I swing it around there's a great view there of um, two things firstly this um, magnificent 19th century architecture that uh, encircles the, the central gardens particularly this um, shall we say block or parade in front of us I mean, the stonework, the brickwork, I think is quite beautiful on that uh, section there. And then just above it, you can see the, the London skyscraper set up there. There's some pretty good detail there. have a look at the, the bandstand. Yep, looks like for lunch today it's only going to be myself and the pigeons. There's not a single other person here. But a great spot, I think, certainly underused. Um, Let me show you some information here. Um, and there you go. Welcome to Finsbury Circus. The bandstand 
is host to a wide variety of open air entertainment from jazz bands to mime artists, including the City of London Festival. And then a little bit of less, interest, less interesting stuff underneath. So that's your, your Finsbury Circus. And just look at some of the detail up here. I mean, this character here. I mean, all these buildings would have been built um, regard with um, in recognition of the world of commerce or industry, the different sectors that these buildings needed the the office space. But uh, there's just some remarkable statuary and work up here. Uh, and in fact, it received a City Heritage Award in 2009. But look at these uh, faces with garlands of flowers and fruits around them. Um, I have no idea what this organisation is, what this premises is for, um, but I mean, you can see the pillars way at the top there. And these urns there. And Uh, another figure up there. I mean, the the whole front of it is just decorated with so many different things. And little cherub there. I mean, when you sort of see these things, you think, was all the effort in some way wasted? Because as I keep saying, no one really looks much above eye level. So, so much of this craftsmanship, these carvings and sculpture would just not be noticed, especially by workers going to and from the station they just wouldn't um, appreciate it but obviously there's bits going on here connected to this which is another part of the Elizabeth line crossrail project this is more in well this will be the new Moorgate station on the Elizabeth line and we'll have a look at that so that's some of what's happening you've got the Elizabeth line Canary Wharf, Abbey Wood, Paddington and that's what it's promising. All that. And this is the, where it goes from. So we're just by Liverpool Street at the moment. And just showing you some of the stations that it will reach. So you've got Shenfield in the east. Abbey Wood in the southeast. It would go to Heathrow and then Reading in the west. So it looks like a pretty exciting piece of transport infrastructure. Let's hope uh, 
something happens there. And you have plenty of bits about it there. And there's an example of how it will look. All in purple, pretty smart. And again, just showing you just over the other side, there's uh, a number of interesting statues up there. Just on there, and a couple of lion heads at the top there, and even a sphere at the top. So. I mean, I certainly have not really paid, paid attention to this, these details here, and I imagine almost no one else has either, but they, I mean, they're just so high up. I mean, who's actually going to, to see these? So let's press on. And uh, another old pub here. Keats at the Globe, again unfortunately closed, it had some bits of Christmas stuff there. And showing you some of the history there, the Globe was an old and popular pub name established during the reign of Charles I. I shan't read the whole thing, but just give you a look at the interior there. And it has a has a tie up with the Meantime Brewery in London. I just have to show you the back of it. It's uh, pretty nice. Where I'm about to cross just now is, is called London Wall, which I have mentioned in the past on previous walks. And London Wall, of course, with a Roman connection, and there are still fragments of the, the development, the Roman development of Londinium. You can see some fragments of wall. And in fact, um, I'm not that far, so actually I, I will show you that now. I was going to go somewhere else, but I think um, as I'm so close, it deserves a look. So the uh, downtown financial district of London on Christmas Eve, December the 24th in the year 2020, around one o'clock early afternoon. And it's pretty quiet, so no surprise there.
and there's a little bit of uh, older history there which I have featured in my Barbican recording so I won't uh, go over there and look at that because we've, we've seen that before. little bit of blue sky for you. Have a look at that tower in the middle there. That was at one time a complete church, but now it's just the town. As you can hear, it's uh, a breezy, windy day today, which is kind of the conditions that I do like, so no complaints there. base of this tower here with these stone uprights there. Reminiscent to some of the towers in New York that I've seen so I do like that. This is pretty special. The, this is the, the old uh, London wall that surrounded the earliest settlement here 2,000 years ago. And they're pretty uh, impressive bricks there. It is just fragments, the original would have been pretty impressive. I can read you that. When German bombing raids in 1940 destroyed the area, the city wall was revealed once again.
and in style I, I have seen something similar I did a, a, an excavation an archaeology project in Bulgaria about five years ago and it was in a town called Hisaria in central Bulgaria and that town was um, was or is famous for its immaculate uh, Roman preservations and there's um, complete wall, Roman wall, that, that, uh, that brings the, the town of, of Hisaria. So looking at this now, that's certainly um, of a similar type. And there's a bit of information there. The Roman city wall set the shape of the city of London for the next 1600 years. Although throughout those centuries, workers continue to maintain it using various building techniques. much of it is sort of overgrown there with weeds and plants etc. And this is the uh, called the Noble Street viewing walkway and give you a, a sort of flavour there. of this wall I mean that's how it would actually have looked with these turrets and towers like uh, more of a sort of medieval type fortification so it's obviously of a much lesser impressive nature today and have I missed anything up here? Um, I think we saw most of what's here. So I want to join any establishment person. There you go. You knew we had to do it. <laughs> the dome of St Paul's Cathedral again, which is um, <clears throat> where we're heading. I should take this opportunity to thank my fellow YouTubers uh, for 
getting me into this game. I was um, impressed with their work and thought I should have a go myself. Most specifically to, to Kenneth in Astoria for your Action Kid channel. Um, special uh, thanks to, to you and also enjoying the work of uh, Johnny in Toronto with some of his city walks. And of course, uh, Gabriel Morris, supreme world traveler, big fan of yours. So to you three gentlemen, I tip my hat and feel that I'm really just a poor imitation, but uh, at some point I'll get there. Let's go in for a closer look. did a filming here yesterday but have decided to come back again today because I saw so many interesting details and I really wanted to to get them filmed look at that what a what a masterpiece course on Christmas Eve, 2,000 years of Christianity, it seems a good idea to, to do it justice by having a close look at one of, this, one of these great, great cathedrals. Uh, certainly within Europe and I'd say across the world really. This plot of ground stood of old Paul's cross, whereat amid such scenes of good and evil as make man affairs, the conscience of, conscience of church and nation through five centuries found public utterance. The first record of it is 1191 AD. And I won't read any further, but um, some pretty fine uh, sentiments there. Just look at those figures on the top there. I mean, they're so high up there, so far away from eye level that I, I just imagine no one's going to see them. Thank you. 
I absolutely love are these faces or I need to put my gloves on, I need to eat my sandwich, etc. So it just remains for me to say thanks again for watching. It's Kent Davidson Urban Adventures, and for a lot more of the same, check out my channel where I cover a lot of different districts of London. So I'll leave you with a last image of one of these. Thank you.